time. What the hell is it? One of the most common phrases that I hear all the time is, I just don't have time for that, or man, I wish there was more time in a day. In this video, we're gonna talk about time, what it really is, the three different types of time, and how you can really use it for just about anything that you wanna do. So let's dive into it. And if you haven't already, make sure to press the subscribe button so you can get notified when videos just like this come out in the future. Time is something that's really hard to put your finger on. Try it. Yeah, exactly. See, I mean, even right now, time is going by. Now, our society is good at two things, wasting time and trying to milk every single minute out of every single day. And while both of those are complete opposites of each other, they're both only about one thing, chronological time. See, there's three different types of time, chronological time, experiential time, and biological time. And in this video, I really wanna break down the three different types and how you can make more time in your day-to-day -day life and make it so when you look back at 30, 40, 50, 60, you don't feel like you wasted time and you feel like you lived a rich and fulfilled life. Let's start with the one you're most familiar with, chronological time. Look at your phone, look at your watch, look at the ball when it drops on New Year's Eve. These are all around a specific chronological time. What that means is this is a time that's based on the magnetic poles, the sun, and so many other variables. And this is a time that we commonly refer to as time, but it isn't the only time. See, this is where you could be more productive. You could set up a schedule. The reason that this is the time that we all use is because we can come to a mass consensus and then we can utilize that so people are on time for things, so people don't miss appointments. And so we can see each other when we both go to the market at the same 6 p.m., not different 6 p.m.s. This is also the time that many physicists say has already passed completely. If you look into quantum physics, all of time has existed in time because time is a thing. It's not what we perceive and experience, but we put a label on something and that's how it's created. I'm not gonna get to that in this video, but I did wanna bring that up. Next, we have biological time. This is a bit different. Think about your body. Have you ever seen someone in their 20s but they look crazy old, or you see someone who's old but they look young and fit? That's biological time. This is the difference. Biological time is your cellular age. A lot of people would say it's the length of your telomere and a few other variables where you can actually go get tested. They'll tell you your telomere based age. What this age is, is it's different from chronological time. It's like why we say dog years or something of that nature, because it's quite literally the age at which our biological material, us, who we are, starts to age, right? We think of old people breaking down and decaying because of the fact that their biology has made it to that point and it's aged and gone through all these different cellular cycles. Cells themselves die and turn over every single year. We're basically being rebuilt with new cells, but what we're talking about is how mitochondria are functioning, how our telomere length is, and our overall ability to be healthy and young and fit and biologically young. Lastly, we have experiential time and you really can't put your finger on this one. When you talk to people who've done DMT, uh, ayahuasca or any type of the psychedelics, they can talk about these different experiences of time. They can say, I spent a hundred years in a certain location. Same thing happens when someone's in a car accident and they can remember every single event, every single second fraction of a second, like it was hours long. The reason that that happens is because we start to experience time different, and this is my favorite one. I love talking about this because it is so interesting. This is literally the magic time of life. Like this is who we are and what we live for because if we don't experience time and we can't lengthen the amount of time that we're experiencing it, then what is life about? It's about making experiential time more fulfilled, more rich, and more lively. This is also the time that people will often say, I don't remember the last 50 years of my life. And the reason that they don't remember the last 50 years of their life is because they spent it doing the same monotonous tasks, functioning as a cog in a broken society. That is the reason that we have people who get to 50 years old and they feel like they've done nothing with their life. It's because they didn't experience the time and they didn't experience the time for many different reasons. But we're not gonna get into that in this video. We are going to get into how you can experience more time. Here's how you can make the most of each of these different times. Chronological time is based around productivity because honestly, if we're not productive with our time, then of course we're wasting it and of course we have less of it. But the same thing can happen when we're being productive and we're rushing certain tasks. See, there's a lot of studies and research that goes into when you actually rush tasks and you don't take the time to do them, it actually takes more time 
than you would have thought in the past. And that's chronological time we're referring to. Now, on the other hand, when you pay attention, you do things closely, that's when you actually speed up and you're more efficient. But experientially, it seems like it was taking a longer amount of time. Then you look up and you go, wow, that's crazy. I did it with both precision and it's better. And so making sure to be productive, but also not rush tasks and focus on one thing at one time is one of the best ways to make sure that you utilize chronological time correctly and efficiently. Biological time, on the other hand, can be lengthened through many different methods. I'm gonna say nutrition, fitness, and meditation. Those three things, if you do those three things, you go work out, you eat well, and you meditate. Every single day, you don't have to work out every single day, but get some activity. But every single day, you'll be able to make sure that your biological clock is good and it's running good. You know, you could get the telomere test, I think it's called, and that will help you see how your telomeres are actually aged. But all in all, being healthy, making sure to keep a calm, clear mind and reducing stress are ways to slow down that aging process in the chronological aspect based on your biological time. Lastly, we have experiential time. This time is probably the most important time because this is what you'll actually remember in life, right? You don't remember your biological time. You don't remember the time you ate something bad and it reduced your cell's ability to actually have respiration. What you do remember or don't remember are the events that occur in your life. This is important and I really want you to understand the gravity of this. Having events that are in time, things that are important to you, going and spending time with loved ones and making meaningful and lasting memories is what experiential time is about. The way to make this time feel like it's more time is to set dates later in time. Make it so you actually have to practice for something and that that time is something that is really important. The more that you do that, the more you'll actually be able to milk out the time of your life. And you'll be able to look back at 50 and you'll be able to love everything that has happened at that point in time in your life because then your life has meaning. All in all, just realize, use your time wisely, feed your body right, make sure your mind's clear, be productive, but pay attention to what you're doing and make sure to make meaningful and lasting memories. You have one life, live it, love it. I mean, seriously, if you don't, there's no reason. And that's why your mind will not remember anything by the time you're 50 and you think that you spent all of your time doing nothing. On the other hand, if you do make lasting memories, everything will change for the better. I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to press like. If it helped you in any way, comment below with just something that you're thinking about with time or an event that you're gonna plan out in the future so you remember it. And I wanna just thank you for watching this and actually taking time out of your day to watch it. So we'll talk soon.